Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over a few things that are crucial to improving and eventually becoming a great Fortnite player. These tips are going to be a tad bit different than any other tip video I've ever done on my channel, due to the fact that instead of breaking down actual gameplay tips, this video will be more so centered around the process of examining the steps necessary to improve as a player. That may sound a tad bit confusing now, but as the video goes on, you'll definitely understand what I mean. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so the first thing that I'm going to strongly suggest if you want to improve and become a great Fortnite player is watching your own gameplay. When you're in the heat of combat, it's very difficult to evaluate in real time if the decisions you're making are the right or the wrong ones. I mean, if you're in the middle of a build fight with an enemy to the left shooting at you, an enemy to the right shooting down your buildings, and an enemy behind you shooting rockets at you, you're going to need to put 100% focus on what you're doing right now or else it's going to lead to you getting killed. There's no time to think, hey, yeah, you know, maybe I should have gone for high ground a little earlier or maybe I should have disengaged engaged from this fight before three people started shooting at me, that just plain and simple isn't possible most of the time. That is why it's so important to, after the fact, rewatch footage of important fights from your gameplay and determine what you did right and what you did wrong. Luckily, even if you don't have a capture card, theater mode is pretty much designed for that kind of stuff and may even be better than just your point of view because you can see things like the positioning and health of all of the enemies you are up against. And I'm also a firm believer that one of the best ways to eliminate mistakes from your game is to actually see you making them firsthand. You know, if you see your friend or someone on a Twitch stream making a mistake that you know is the wrong thing to do in Fortnite, yeah, you'll probably tell him think it to yourself well you'll quickly push it out of your mind and you'll be susceptible to making the same mistake when you play the game however if you see yourself firsthand in a theater replay making a mistake you're going to be very very unlikely to repeat that mistake again in future gameplays now something you're going to need to understand about this if you want to accurately evaluate your own gameplays and evaluate the mistakes that you're making in game you're going to need to eliminate eliminate as much as possible blaming Fortnite for your deaths. I know this is going to be very difficult and even I fall victim to this very very much even after the fact when I'm evaluating my own gameplay because it's no secret that Fortnite right now is not in the best state gameplay wise. There are a lot of really overpowered weapons and a lot of gameplay mechanics that are catering to lower skilled players so a lot of the time you're going to see some deaths and say oh you know he was just spraying at me with a drum gun and I was trying to build but he shredded right through it and killed me what you need to do is realize that even though the mistake that directly led to your death may not have been entirely your fault you probably made some mistakes leading up to that point that let you get into that unavoidable death situation that eventually ended up getting you killed. I know it's going to be tough, it's really hard to not blame the game, but if you can take this really unbiased point of view where you evaluate your gameplay and the good and bad plays you're making, it'll really help you improve in the long run and it'll just help you keep calm when you're playing Fortnite. So yeah, watching film, definitely something you're going to see at the highest level of pretty much every game baseball football soccer hockey basketball all of those teams and individual players will watch a lot of film to not only learn about the teams they're playing but also to learn about themselves as players and as a team and you're even seeing it now at top level competitive gaming the team will sit down together watch film of their scrims or games or whatever evaluate what they're doing right evaluate what they're doing wrong and you can do the same thing as an individual fortnite player the next thing that we're going to be discussing in this video today is the importance of identifying your strengths and your weaknesses as a Fortnite player. If I were to ask you right now, give me your biggest strength and your biggest weakness as a Fortnite player, I have a feeling a lot of you guys probably would take at least a few seconds up to a few minutes to actually identify what those are. And to be honest, some of you guys probably don't know, period. It is really important to know your strengths and weaknesses in Fortnite for two different reasons. 
first off, the more obvious one. If you know your weaknesses, you can make a conscious effort to improve upon those weaknesses, which is really important to becoming a great Fortnite player. It's really hard to be a great Fortnite player if you have obvious major weaknesses in your game. I mean, imagine trying to be a top Fortnite player if you have really bad close range shotgun aim and really bad building skills. It's going to be pretty much impossible unless you improve upon at least one, if not both of those skills. However, reason number two is maybe even more important and deals with that exact thought process. If you know your strengths and weaknesses and you're very confident about what those strengths and weaknesses are, you're going to be able to play towards your strengths and not play towards your weaknesses. I know I bring them up a lot on this channel, but a perfect example of this, basically the poster boy for knowing your strengths and weaknesses in Fortnite, is Nick Merckx. Nick Merckx is only undoubtedly a top tier Fortnite player, but I have never seen someone at his level of competition with stronger strengths and weaker weaknesses. This guy has undoubtedly probably the best gun skill on all of console Fortnite, maybe the best positioning, incredible IQ, but when you compare his building to other players around his skill level, he probably has the worst. So what does he do? He doesn't try to, you know, conform to the meta of, oh, I'm going to get in these crazy long build battles with all these other great players that are better at building than me. I'm going to play towards my strengths and use my positioning, use my close and long range accuracy to pick off people before they're even able to reaction build, get in their face so they can't use building and have to get into a shotgun fight where he's going to have the huge advantage. So, so important to know your strengths and weaknesses for both of those reasons. And I'm a firm believer that every single player, no matter how good or bad you are, has strengths and has weaknesses. I believe even a 30 KD player has weaknesses and even a 0.1 KD player has strengths. Nobody is going to be exactly equal at every single aspect of Fortnite, so super important to recognize those and work around them in your gameplay. Tip number three is going to be setting goals that you can use to indicate and encourage improvement as a Fortnite player. I believe that a lot of humans are really, really goal-oriented people. It's why a tip you get all the time in school for something like a project or studying or reading a book is to set like mini goals on a checklist along the way, like a six, seven step process. I got to do all of these things and when I'm done, the project is over. So that way, as you finish one or two of the steps, even though you may be just beginning the project, just being able to check one or two of those things off the checklist is going to really make you feel like you're making progress and encourage you to continue on your journey. It's the same way in Fortnite, and I would strongly recommend setting statistical goals that will help you indicate improvement. I know not everyone is a huge fan of stats. Some people believe they mean nothing. Some people believe they can be really misleading, but it's hard to gauge improvement and set goals without statistics. You know, if you make your goal, oh, two months from now, I want to be a better Fortnite player. You know, you probably will improve in that two month time period to achieve your goal, but you won't really be able to tell how or how much you've improved over that two month time period. Let's say you're a 1KD player and you set a goal, all right, two months from now, I want to be a 1.5KD player, or by the beginning of season six, I want to be a 2KD player. If you set your goals using something objective like stats, you can track your progress the entire time, see how close you're getting, and ultimately at the end of the allotted time frame, definitively determine whether or not you actually hit your goal. But it doesn't have to be as simple as KD. It can be something like solo wins. It can be something like finishing top 100 in solo showdown. As an example, my goal for this month of Fortnite was to become the number one earner on all of game battles just by playing. Fortnite. And at the end of the month, I ultimately was successful. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. Me and my duos partner were the number one earners on all of GameBattles.com for the month of July by a pretty wide margin. Really proud of that. Took a lot of grinding, made me a much better Fortnite player, and is a perfect indication of what setting goals can do for you as a Fortnite player as well. 
So the final thing I want to discuss in this video today before we wrap it up is a tip I've actually mentioned before on my channel, but I just want to reinforce it now that we're seeing a lot more competitive Fortnite events that are available to watch for pretty much everyone as long as you have a YouTube or Twitch account, and that is to watch top level Fortnite gameplay. Whether it be your favorite streamers, you know, the top tier players like Tfu or Ninja or Daquan or Myth, or like I just mentioned, watching those super competitive summer skirmish events that have a lot of, you know, top established pro players with a large following, as well as some new guys around the block who are really hungry, like the guys that qualified from the solo showdown event and are now playing in the summer skirmish event. You can learn so, so much by watching these top players go at it against each other and incorporating what you're seeing into your own gameplay. It is just unbelievable how crazy these guys can play when they're trying 100% with a ton of money on the line. I mean, seriously, I usually only watch like 45 minutes to an hour of these events when I see them on on like Friday or Saturday, and I learn at least a few things every single event I watch because the players are just so crazily good. And no matter how good or bad you are as a Fortnite player, you will simply learn so much from watching these guys play and trying to see what you can incorporate into your own game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Like I referenced earlier in this video, what would you consider your biggest strength as a Fortnite player? And what would you consider your biggest weakness as a Fortnite player? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, do whatever the heck you want. And I will catch you guys next time.